<laughs> you know, kind of a busybody that lives up the up the street, up up the hill, yeah. on the other side of them. And she's she says she's watching them all. There's <coughs> there's cars coming all. The time is 4:30 p.m. The Pelican Rapids City Council meeting of 27 February 2024 is called to order. Uh, just a reminder, if everyone would please sign in on the clipboard by the back door before you leave and also put your phone on vibrate. And for council, we have to be done by 6 p.m., no later than 6 p.m. tonight because tonight is Precinct Caucus Night in Minnesota. Roll call of members, Danielle. Council Member uh, Steve Strand. Here. Council Member Kevin Ballard. Here. Council Member Kurt Markrath is absent tonight and Council Member Steve Foster. Here. And Mayor Brent Fraser. Here, I want to welcome each and every one of you here this evening in our city council chambers, those joining us by Zoom. Remember, our city council meetings are seen on Pelican Rapids' YouTube channel and also on Channel 14 on Wednesday evening. Uh, just a few announcements for the next couple of weeks. Uh, this Thursday, February 29th, uh, 10 to 11 a.m. is conversations with the mayor at Historic City Hall. Sunday, March 10th, the daylight savings time begins. Spring must be close. Our next city council meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March 12th at 4.30 p.m. here in the city council chambers. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? Hearing none, we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item number two is citizens' comments. Anyone in our audience this evening for citizens' comments? I do not see anybody. Okay. Item number three is additions, deletions to the agenda. Any additions or deletions? Any additions or deletions? Move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Motion second. Discussion? 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 Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. What was the same? Motion carried. Item number four is approval of consent agenda, which I'll read. Item number 4A is approval of council minutes from February 13th, 2024. 4B is approval of council work session minutes of February 12th, 2024. 4C is approval of council payable listing. 4D is park board minutes, which are in your packet. 4E1 is utility report, which was in the packet from February 2024. And 4E2 is a liquor store report, which was on our desk here this evening as we I started. move the consent agenda. Second. Second. Motion second. Discussion. 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 Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carried. That'll take us in item number five, a THC ordinance discussion. Uh, I believe this is just an FYI at this point, unless we do something else. But uh, Administrator Roysom is going to share some information with us this evening regarding that topic. Yes, yeah, so um, the Ottertail County moratorium um, expired February 1st, so um, it's legal to sell all over the county, and there's been many businesses around the county that have registered now with the state to sell it, including three in, in the city of Pelican right now, so it's the lic our liquor store, um, Park Region, and Arco are all on that registered list. Right now there is no fee or anything for to get that to be on that registered list um, so it's still kind of in limbo for, right now it's under the Minnesota Department of Health all these this part of it but when they once they get that Office of Cannabis Management up and going then the licenses will go through there and the cities like some cities now have their own ordinances and do their own licensing and things like that well there will be no city licensing or anything it'll all go through that Office of Cannabis Management so there's still just things in limbo where I'm not sure it makes sense for us to do an ordinance right now. We don't, we don't need to. Um, so I just wanted to discuss what's going on and what where we're at with it. Um, the county is, are basically just kind of on pause as well just because the, they're waiting as well to see what the state is going to do. Um, the state's in 
in session now and they're hopefully going to be clearing some of these things up so they give us more direction so we'll continue to work with the county on these ordinances um, there's going to be more direction from the state um, I know we have liquor store representatives here tonight if they want to um, kind of say what they're doing and what why and um, they certainly mm -hmm. can Maggie or Tasha I don't know if you want to come up and What can I tell you? We decided that we were going to sell it. Do you want to introduce yourself to the audience at home? I am Maggie. I am the liquor store manager. This is my assistant, Tasha. I have had her looking into this over the past year since they've said that we would be able to do this. And when it became available to us, we are starting to dip our toes in it with just the beverages at the moment, but we're thinking of doing the gummies as well. And so far, sales have been fine. We're selling the THC products every day since we've gotten them in. So right now, it's, I mean, it costs absolutely nothing to get registered for the state, so it really hasn't cost anything besides getting some product and things and then you're selling. But so in the future, like I said, the Office of Cannabis Management, there will be a fee and st they say starting January 2025, well, if they get everything together by then. so. It seems like a good testing period to see where demand is or how it goes and if there's any negative effects and things like that. But because you guys have said that like last summer people were asking about it quite we often. A lot of people asking last summer and since, even since it became legal in Minnesota, we were getting calls and our calls were always answered with, we're in Ottertail County. We cannot do it. I guess I was just surprised that uh City staff or council didn't know you were selling it before you were, or you were going to sell it. Kind of did. Say again? I was at a department meeting on the Wednesday before it actually hit the store, so it was made known. Not everybody was at that department head meeting, but it was made known that I was doing it. I mean, the council just found out today. It would have been nice to know about this ahead of time. Okay. But that's water under the bridge now. How much of this are you selling per day or per week in dollars or right now packs or whatever it's coming in? I don't know. Well, we have them in four packs and single cans. And then we're selling one to five products a day, whether it's a single can or a four pack. I mean, we just get individual quantities, but we've sold the first day we brought it in that night. We sold three, four packs to someone and then we sold two or three singles. And then every day since then, there's been a couple sales on it. Okay. But like I said, we were just dipping our toes. We only got six cases. Yeah, one yeah. case of That's basically six been different one, flavors. One week that you've been doing it, basically? Yeah, February 15th. <coughs> was the first day getting it in. And we, we haven't done any advertising on it or anything. And these are all people that are just coming in and buying it. It's not. That's Mr. Ant. So do you have to be 21 or what? Mm -hmm. okay. Same as cigarettes or liquor. Except the rules with this are you are to card everybody that buys it. I was researching today. I still don't get it. But so it's five percent is allowed. Right? Well, there's 50 milligrams per package that's legally allowed to be sold. So in a four pack, that's 10 milligrams each. That's 40 milligrams per package that's being sold. So that's still within legal limits. But if you ha so by selling it singly. We have five milligram product and we have 10 milligram product that is all within the legal standards. But it's five milligrams per can drink the yes. maximum. Well, no, it's a 50 milligram per thing. The gummies is where they want it to be at a five milligram per gummy, but for the drinks, it's different. And that's where the 10 milligram drinks, they just hit the market recently. But I know like 
I went to the Lindsey Sterling concert in August at the amphitheater. The amount of people that had those five milligram drinks, I couldn't believe it. There were so many people, and they were selling for the same price as a beer, 12 bucks a can. Really? And they were everywhere. So can you drink those and drive legally? I'm not sure about the driving rules with it, because I know they're working on the different testing. So I imagine as things go on, they're not going to want you to be doing that as much, no. But I know that, because what are they, was it like a spit test that they were working on? doing I forget or if it's like a tab I don't understand that part of it <laughs> so have you tried it the one five milligram I sampled one at the Lindsay Sterling concert just to see what it tasted like and it was a seltzer it didn't really do anything because I did I just took a couple sips of it to see flavor so I didn't feel anything but if you drink one of those then you get kind of high from my understanding, from communicating with people, it, it's different on how it affects you on the differences on gummies, drinks, and smoking it. It's all about how your body absorbs it. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this is, it's just, this is me communicating with other yeah, people to know, and that's, this is what I'm yeah. understanding from it as I know the chief was going to comment on this, but he had to yeah. step out. He had a phone call. Yeah, I know when this... The legislature sort of put the cart before the horse when yeah. they passed this because I believe the testing methods won't won't be out till next year, 2025, even though it's <coughs> legal to sell this year. Well, the edibles were legal first before marijuana became legal statewide, too. So, I mean, the edibles and stuff have been out for longer than that. Like, when they signed the bill to legalize cannabis entirely, edibles and drinks were already out there. And the tax wasn't even implemented yet at that point in time. So the drinks and gummies and stuff have been out for a while. I know even in Fargo Moorhead, they have issues because Fargo, it's not legal Moorhead, it is. So how much is a gummy then? Do you buy one at a time or? From what I've seen, like our rep that brought us the paperwork on it, he had packages that were 50 milligram gummies, 10 per box and they were five milligrams per gummy okay so if you ate the whole jar whew, that's 50 milligrams i wouldn't suggest that <laughs> well, like how much is uh how much are they then well at a store in town they're 15.99 that they're selling the gummy package for and that's how many packages again it, well you get the one jar and it's 50 milligrams total in the okay. jar and each gummy inside is five milligrams so you get 10 gummies in there. Okay. And that's where, and I know even like for us, like the drink that we got in for one of them, or the rep that sold it to us told us that they're even changing how they want the labels to be done. Like they used to be able to have QR codes if all the information wouldn't fit on the label. Well, now the state says, no, you can't do that. So now they want everything on the label and things like that are constantly changing. I know the gummy jars, they want them to be solid color now, no clear, where before there wasn't as much regulation on it. So is there a testing agency that confirms it's not over 5%? From my understanding, anything that has THC or cannabis product in it needs to be within that 0 0.3 THC. Um, everything has that on it. I forget the exact wording. Okay. I'm sorry, but anything, uh, everything has that on it to legally be sold. But it's the same idea. You use barley and beer, and then you get your alcohol percentage. Well, that's what they're doing with the THC. And that's where sometimes it gets a lot to learn. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been an experience. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, no problem. <laughs> so for, how do you, so for the tax, well, the tax on it, I mean, is it the same? It's a 10% tax plus your local tax. So for us, where well, we're at 7.865, 7.675, so we are 10% plus that. And then I know that 10% is supposed to go to the state to help set up all these organizations and right. stuff, yeah, all the so committees. I guess that's my question. I mean, how do you, you have, to, you have to track that? Yeah, we have a separate tax line, THC tax, that that's has that added in alcohol. Yeah, alcohol is 9.875%. Okay. 
Oh my God. And I will say that the way that they are saying that they want money given back to you with this tax is 80% is going to the state to do what they have to do and 20% 20 comes back to the county. And depending how many stores are in that county that are selling it decides how much of a percentage you get back. Okay. Wow. Did the chief want to enter in on this yeah. conversation? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it legal to drink and drive this stuff? It is still legal to be impaired. So to have consumed some, <laughs> that you can't you can't be impaired. I mean, so that that becomes the unlike unlike alcohol, where there's going to be a a known quantity that it's in your blood yeah. that we can say that you're impaired, regardless of how your conduct is. If this is in your blood. We're going to have to establish that you're impaired. So we can't do that right now, can we? Or? Like, Ken, based on your driving conduct. Hmm. It, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be an equipment violation, like, like on, on an alcohol offense. An equipment violation, I can walk up, I detect the odor of alcohol. As soon as I detect the odor of alcohol, I do field sobriety. And if, if you are over the legal limit, you might walk and talk better than I do, mm. but because you're over the legal limit, you are you are by definition impaired. It won't work that way. I will have to show that you are physically impaired by this being in your system, because there isn't an established quantity in your blood, because mm. it's in your blood longer. So, kind of a challenge then, huh? Yep, but that's going to exist. It has nothing to do with local sales rights. I mean, it's going to. It's going to happen. It's going to be sold everywhere. So that's something that we globally will have to figure out. Far bigger than just the city of Pelican. So They've had it in Becker County for a long time. And I know a lot of people who go to Becker County and get it. Monoman has a dispensary where you can buy the actual product, not a drink, not a gummy, actual marijuana. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. When will a... Have that here, or will that have to go through a? I'm not interested in that, so I did not research that part. <laughs> but I can research that some more. I don't know January about January 2025 is when you can start, but that all depends on if they get their division together, that Office of Cannabis Man Management, and get their ducks in a row to make it happen. But because my understanding, anything that actually has the actual plant itself as little product. It has to be a dispensary that sells it. That's why there's, what, two okay. reservations in Minnesota that sells it. I don't know if there's more. I know Red Lake was able to open right away because they already had medical marijuana that was being grown in their reservation. And then White Earth opened not long after. But I don't, that's as far as I went to research that because I knew liquor store wise we weren't going that route. <laughs> so that's where I'd more research focused on the drinks and the gummies and it was as I went to different things at different places we did I went to we fest and they had tents with pre-rolled what they call them spliffs spit spits or whatever it's called they had pre-rolled stuff there that people were buying and smoking they had drinks they had and that was at we fest okay so it, it's a big money maker for us it's something that people are like with no advertising and selling it daily that's our locals that are coming in every day buying it. It's not something that we put out there. We don't have people driving from other towns purchasing it. So it's good to at least have something to help get us through, especially with the construction this summer and stuff. We'll have people that are going to want it. It was, it was last summer. It isn't all about the money. No, it's not, it's, but. I mean, what, what other pitfalls are we presenting before the kids to fall into? Well, kids get it, a hold a of a system. lot of stuff, too, that we can't prevent kids from getting into. So to be, how do you stop kids from getting lots of things? Right now, I'm dealing with the fact that Fargo busted someone for making 500 fake IDs. Nothing in that news article said those IDs were taken off of the street. I'm constantly <laughs> worried about fake IDs and getting stuff in the hands of minors. So as a liquor store point of view... I'm constantly trying to keep stuff out of kids' hands. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a constant issue, and it does, it's... 
Well, there's nothing we can do with it at this point, but the legislature may make changes, you say, Lance? Well, there, there's, I mean, there's definitely issues here, so I'm thinking they'll be addressing some things and clarifying some things at okay. least. And, okay. and once, like they say, January 25 comes around, that, that Office of Cannabis Management should, should be in place and give us more direction on yeah. what needs to be done. But So we'll be addressing this in the future, more than likely. Oh, yeah. So just back to the logistics of it, I mean, so do you have to cut them a check for their sales or does, I mean, is it like your sales tax or how does that? It runs, it runs through our POS just as our beer and anything else that we sell, it runs through the POS. We fill out the paperwork every day that gets sent to City Hall from what is sold to where our tax breakdowns are. It's all right there. It's nothing special here. We buy it from a beer company, so there's no special company that we're writing a check out to. It's all just right there. So nothing changes for you as far as the, the paperwork side of it, other than Adding the when you're ordering it from your distributor. Correct. We had to talk to our computer guys. We had to get them to get our tax <coughs> set for it they went into our system they set everything up so it was ready to go and and I had to go online and sign our liquor store up for the THC tax so now that we we can pay the THC tax the Otter Tail County tax sales tax and then the state sales tax so now we pay three different taxes and the liquor tax I guess too Thanks for explaining. You're welcome. And I mean, anytime you want to talk, I'm at the liquor store. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any more discussion from the council? Any more discussion? Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Have a good night. Item number six, City Hall computer server, Lance. Okay, so we've been having issues with the computers, mainly with uh, Banyan our software for you know, utility billing and accounting and things like that been very slow. Uh, we've had Matt from Lakes Country Service Cooperative, our tech guy, kind of looking into things to find out that our server is from about 2011, 2012, which is what, 12, 13, 14 years old, whatever. Um, the usual life cycle for a server is seven years. Um, he's not guaranteeing that this is going to solve all of our issues with Banyan, but he says it definitely is time to, s to replace this server. Um, he's recommending, there's two options, you can go brand new or refurbished. Um, if we go the refurbished route with, with all costs and things, it would be right around that $4,000, and that would include um, a replacement war warranty five years um, we kind of went through and looked at new and and refurbished and he's kind of recommending just going the refurbished route because it's just they're almost just as good and if you get that extended warranty of five years it's kind of a good way to go so um, I guess we're just asking it wasn't specifically in the budget so that's why we want to bring it up we have this um, line item for capital for the council chambers technology there's still 5,000 in there right now, so we could use use that money. So just maybe a motion to be able to get a server in place for up to 5,000, which it shouldn't be up there. It should be more right around that 4,000, but. I move to approve a refurbished server for up to $5,000. Motion second, discussion, discussion, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Was the same motion carried. Item number seven, pool security cameras, and there was a handout in our packet this evening. Lance. So there was no kind of cameras or anything in the pool plans. So we just kind of researched what it would take to put some in there. Um, so this is the estimate for three cameras, uh, one right at the main entrance, and then two kind of overlooking the pool area. Um, it's the same company we use for all, all of our cameras in the in the city. Um, so we just kind of brought it up to see if you guys would be interested in wanting cameras in our new pool facility. Um, it's that 
three thousand and five dollars is the cost. Uh, any questions or anything? Or I, I looked at it. I'm, those guys. I'm sure they do a nice job, but I would do the cheap route. I'd spend like three hundred dollars. I mean, are you going to try to get a face, or are we worried about burglarizing, or what's the purpose? Well, for I mean, it's it's a good way to keep from vandalism and all that other stuff. I mean, to keep an eye on this. I mean, this is a five million dollar area now. I mean, yeah, it's we've yeah. invested that much money in it. It's makes sense to try and protect it. <coughs> the old but, one got vandalized a lot. They're painted, spray painted. If you have a pool in your backyard, and your neighbor kid comes into it. You're liable for anything that happens in that pool, regardless if you have a gate, fence, lock, whatever. And I would assume that a community pool would fall under the same thing with a campground right next door to it and with, I don't know, I, if, do we have the money, where are we going to get $3,005 to pay for it? Well, it's all in the pool fund, we'd have enough. The money is there at this point? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's basically like a chain, well, we're not considering a change order. We're, it's just a contract between us and, or the city and, and, uh. So Lance, the concern is after hours type of thing? Or what? Yeah, but it also, I mean, if there's an incident on the pool deck or something, if there's a fight or whatever, we can yeah, go back yeah. on the cameras and look exactly what happened rather than he said, she said. We can go back and look. I mean. I don't know what is Chief Quaintance, if you want to chime in, I mean is there what are the values of security cameras in your point of view? I think it's good for security for if there's something that happens in the evening as well, but um, I, I can can also say that where I came from we had a uh, water pad or whatever you call it, you know, a water park. And there were incidents that occurred during the day that it was it was helpful. To have the camera and be able to go back and mm. see what had happened um, you know a lot of times these systems have a greater capacity greater detail I mean I think mm -hmm. it's it's things worth the investment to have that I mean um, it's just you'd hate you'd hate to have something that somebody accuse us of something being wrong and our cameras not be able to truly say whether or not it was an issue on our part or theirs and so higher quality to me is other than <clears throat> I move to approve. Is there I'll a second? Second. Motion second. Discussion. 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 Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carried. Item number eight, a resolution ordering improvement regarding Broadway Trunk Highway 59, First Avenue. Northeast Mill, West Mill Avenue County St State Aid Highway 96 and East Mill Avenue Trunk Highway 108. And there was a resolution on the desk this evening and Lance would speak to that. So this is the resolution needed basically from last night's public hearing. Um, it's a requirement for the process of this bonding from our bond council. They sent us this resolution basically from last night's public hearing. It's, it's approving the improvements it's it's needed for our financing basically so I move to adopt resolution 2024-03 second motion second discussion 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 hearing none all in favor signify by saying aye 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 opposed the same motion carried Item number nine, contract for household hazardous waste day, August 7th, 2024, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that was in your packet. Administrator Royson? Well, Danielle, did you get that or what? So yeah. That's just something oh, that's okay. done every year, I believe. But. Uh, yeah, we, we do it every year. Um, the only thing the city has to do is um, provide four to five people to help sort the waste, a couple people to help manage traffic. Um, and then we also provide food for them during the day. And that's that. So, yeah, if I, I just need a motion to sign the contract with. Motion to approve? Well, it's the wrong date every year. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same date. I think yeah, that it's I the know. same. The 
first Wednesday, I think, of every every August. Move to approve the contract for household hazardous waste. I'll second that. Motion second. Discussion? Discussion? <coughs> Discussion? It's usually just Brian's guys that take care of that, right? Yeah, yeah, and the summer help, yep. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed the same. Motion carried. Item number 10, administrative report, Administrator Rison. All right, since the last meeting, uh, we're set the agenda and prepped for the council meeting, attended a department head meeting, attended an EDC meeting, uh, met with deed representatives and went over the process of requesting reimbursement funds for the pool construction costs. Started preparing the deed monitoring visit documents of the pool project, which is the, and this monitoring visit is going to be this Thursday, the 29th. Attended the Ottertail County Housing Convening. Worked with Matt from Lakes Country Service Cooperative on the City Hall computer server needs. Uh, Mayor Fraser and I attended that strategic planning training by Dave Bartholomew, hosted by Lakes Country Service Cooperative. Uh, researched THC regulations and reached out to Jody Lean from Ottertail County Public Health and the League of Minnesota Cities for guidance. And attended the public hearing for the Highway 59 108 improvements. Any questions? Do we know? For this, uh, I don't even know what you call it. This development that the county is going to be doing down here, with are they doing like are they doing a bid opening for that, or are they? Are there the will crop? be so. Yep. Um, I'm assuming the county is taking care of care of all of that. No, it's actually it's going to be through the city. So Apex is doing the uh, design and everything now, and then there'll be a there there will be a bid opening, and I'm guessing that will be here at some point. Yep. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11, Mayor report just a few items in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, February 15th, I spoke to the assisted living residents on news, what's going on in the city, activities, e events. Uh, and old Administrator Roysom is going to speak to them in the near future regarding the 2024 Complete Streets Project. Uh, February 20, 20th, uh, Danielle and I attended Pelican Rapids Fire Department uh, Relief Association meeting at the fire hall. Also on February 22nd, uh, Administrator Royce and I attended, uh, what was the name of the meeting last? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Oh, the strategic planning meeting. Yeah, strategic training. planning meeting yep. for Lake Sudbury Cooperative. On uh, February 21st, uh, Zoom meeting with Administrator Royce and also uh, Jordan regarding the Ottertail County Housing Convening meeting, and that was, like I say, by Zoom. Uh, I worked the uh, Home and Garden Show on uh, Friday, February uh, 23rd, from about uh, 11 till five, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, then worked all day Sunday. It was, it was a great turnout, a lot of people there. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, different contacts than I had before, many, unfamiliar faces, but many people that come through the booth have pelican ties. They've either lived here in the past, they have relatives that live here now, or they come to our festivities here in the summertime. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a good PR tool at this point. Uh, also, uh, February 26th, I met with Administrator Royson to plan the council agenda for today, and then yesterday, February 26th, attended the public hearing regarding a complete streets assessment project. Any questions? Thank you. Seeing no other business, yes. we'll move. <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Meeting adjourned. Mayor, you said time change. When's that? Huh? Time change? What? Uh, March 10th, it's it. March 10th. Oh, man.